Welcome to Podcast 2 from the book Leaving Cleveland. Today's chapter will be read by Stephen Begleiter and Kate Segrist. Thank you for tuning in. Chapter 2, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Rachel and I had always gotten along. Although she was six years older, we had similar interests. We both aspired to be artists. She a painter, me a photographer. We liked the same type of hippie music. We were both reasonably adventurous, though in truth, she was much more so. I think what really bounded us was a drug experience. She got hold of some LSD from a boyfriend and offered me a tap. Our parents were out of town. I'd never done that kind of drug, but I trusted her. Her boyfriend had placed the tabs in two peanut butter cookies. At the count of three, we both started eating the cookies. Then waited for something to happen. Fifteen minutes, half an hour, nothing. A bust. But then we looked at each other. We started laughing. Before long, the walls were undulating, and Rachel was waving her arms rhythmically and saying she was a windmill. I was seeing rainbows tracing behind the movements of her arms like jet contrails. It's getting weird, I told her. But Rachel assured me everything would be fine. Let's go outside and walk around Shaker Lakes. We must have walked for hours, from our modest house in Cleveland Heights to the mansions in Shaker Heights. We talked about Nixon, Jackson Pollock, the Vietnam War, Baba Ram Dass, our favorite foods. I was listening to my heartbeat and to what seemed like thousands of singing birds. I didn't think about the time until I saw the long shadows and realized the whole day had elapsed. When we reached our house again, it was dark. Entering, we heard the phone ringing. Rachel ran to the kitchen to pick it up. Hi, Mom. How's the cruise? As soon as I heard the mom word, I froze up and held my breath. No. We're just hanging out. Everything's fine. How's Dad? She looked at me and mouthed, Do you want to talk to Mom? I waved my hands frantically and mouthed, No. Mom, Sammy just took off to go to the bathroom, but I'll fill him in. I love you. Rachel looked at me exasperated. What's your problem? My problem? My problem is I can barely speak a complete sentence. Mom would know I was high or something and cut her trip short to come home. How do you act so calm anyway? Aren't you still high? Of course, but I'm in the moment, you know. Be here now. We raided the refrigerator and made bologna, Velveeta, and mayo on white bread sandwiches and ate like we were starving. I opened up a box of ding-dongs and we devoured them. Feeling satiated, we went our separate ways. I went into the room and she into hers. I stayed awake all night staring at the ceiling until the sun rose. My thoughts raced as I steered from Highway 84 to 684, Boston in the rear view, New York looming ahead. I started feeling a bit nervous. I wasn't sure how to get to the Tappan Zee Bridge. I pulled off the road and asked for directions from a cashier at a truck stop. I bought a Kit Kat and a Coke and I got back into the car. As I approached the ramp, a young woman waved me down. I pulled over. Sorry to bother you, but I need a lift. I can pay you. She said, breathing heavily. Which way are you going? I asked. Toward New York. She said as she opened the door and jumped in. Where are you going? She was petite, and I did not see her as a threat. Besides, she was not unattractive in the right light. The Upper West Side of New York, and, and you don't owe me anything, I said. I turned and rearranged my stuff on the back seat to make room for her bag. Can we get going? She said impatiently and looked out the rear window. What's the hurry, I asked. Look, here it is. The cops are after me. I was just being friendly to some truckers when the cops came into the shop. Why would the police care about that? She gave me a sharp look. I was trying to turn a trick. How stupid of me to pick up a hitchhiker. I mean, she could have had a gun, knock me off, and take everything I own. Come to New York and become a famous photographer, Rachel said. Right. Come to New York and become a statistic. 
do you usually find your Johns at a truck stop? I asked, trying to sound calm and worldly. I was supposed to meet my girlfriend there, but the bitch never showed. She was my ride home. I wasn't supposed to be there that long. She reached into her bag and rummaged. Oh boy, this was it. She was looking for her gun. She pulled out a sketchbook and said, giggling. Do you want to see my sketches? I've been told I'm a pretty good artist. Relieved, I responded, sure. She started leafing through her book of illustrations of demons and Satan. She had copied Hieronymus Bosch, Garden of Earthy Delights. The third panel, the one with all the horrific images of hell. She looked at me. What do you think? What do I think? I think you're crazy. I think I'm crazy for allowing you to get into my car. Um, I think you're very talented and should consider art school, I said. Really? She responded, putting her hand on my thigh and squeezing. Look, I don't usually do this, but you're being so nice to me and all. If you pull off at the next exit, I'll give you a blowjob. I imagined pulling off into the discreet place in the woods and closing my eyes to relish the full intensity of the experience I had often fantasized about and getting hit in the head with a rock. I took her hand off my thigh, thanked her for her generous offer, and told her I had to get to an appointment in the city, I said. I would drive her to the apartment, which she said was just north of the Tappan Zee Bridge. I'm really good at it. I could dig my nails deep into your back, she said. Um, uh, no, thanks. Uh, I really have to go. Just tell me where you want to be dropped off. I took her to the apartment. As she got out of the car, she turned and said, My girlfriend and I live in apartment 3C. If you ever pass this way, stop by and see us. Okay, I will, I said. I got back onto I-684, the span of the Tappan Zee Bridge, straight ahead of me. This is Stephen Begletter, and I'd like to thank you for listening to our podcast, Leaving Cleveland. To learn more, go to www.leavingcleveland.blog.com.